So, hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and I'm here to talk about the question of extroversion and intelligence. Five reasons why extroverts may seem dumber than they actually are. And I want to talk about Susan Cain's book Quiet, The Introvert's Revolution. And um, I want to say, first and foremost, almost everything you've been told about introverts is wrong. Susan Cain's whole book is incorrect. Elaine Aron said it well herself. When Susan Cain talks about introverts, she gets almost every fact right. The problem is... She has confused introverts with highly sensitive people. And it has been demonstrated over and over, extroverts can also be highly sensitive. It is not just introverts that value alone time, time to recharge energy. Uh, it's not just introverts that feel that their nervous center gets frazzled, rattled when there is a lot going on around them extroverts feel the very same thing and I've been exploring extroverted HSP for a long time and I think it overlaps a lot with being an ENFP or an ENTP or an ENFJ or ENTJ for that matter and I want to say sometimes we think introverts are smarter because we think we tend to think that introverts use their head and that extroverts go with their gut this is a common dichotomy in the world today. A person that thinks, reflects before they take action are almost always introverted. A person that speaks out without thinking, that takes action without thinking, is almost always going to be an extrovert. Now, I don't think this is true. And... Um, I was researching uh, the Enneagram and they talk a lot about thinking and why we think and they talk a lot about emotions and why we make emotional decisions. And they never claimed that introverts were more likely to be thinking or head types. They never made the idea that extroverts tend to be heart types. It's not necessarily so that uh, an introvert is going to be more anxious, where an extrovert is going to be more shame-driven. It's not that an extrovert is going to be more about people or that an introvert is going to be more about thinking and logical reflection. So a lot of the dichotomies about introverts and extroverts and intelligence are completely off point. Completely off the mark. And there is a dumbification going on as introverts are trying to increase their value and their self-esteem. A lot of introverts have this idea that I need to increase my self-esteem by cutting up and stereotyping on extroverts. I need to make extroverts seem dumber, less competent, less reliable, less steady, less trustworthy, worse leaders than myself. And it's not the right way to go. And I'm an introvert myself. I value the inner world above the outer world. I am a person that enjoys exploring this inner world of thought and seeing how I can translate it to understand reality. I prefer theory and intrapersonal understanding and reflection. I am an INFJ personality type, an introverted, intuitive, feeling and judging personality type. This means that introversion gives me a sense of peace and tranquility and calm that extroversion simply does not offer me. I can fake being an extrovert, I can put on an extroverted front, but it will only succeed in rattling me, making me nervous, antsy, restless, reckless, and prone to making bad decisions. When I am in the grip of extroversion, I become more irrational than an extrovert. And here's the thing, extroverts are super rational in practice. Sure, in theory, from a distance, they may appear less experienced, less seasoned, less understanding. But in practice, in actual decision-making scenarios where you have to think on your feet, where you have to make decisions and to take action based on new information. Extroverts are typically going to outperform introverts. 
there are situations where you need, where you prefer and will do better if you're an extrovert. There are situations where you will do better if you're an introvert. And one of those situations may just be taking an intelligence test. Having the time to sit down for 30 minutes, 60 minutes to write and think and reflect, to write and think and reflect. As information is passing you by, new opportunities are coming up, new information is hitting you all the time. Introverts are going to do better in these kinds of environments. Extroverts are going to do better in hands-on, real-life intelligence tests where you are given people, patterns, exploration, new information, new insight, things that you don't understand, words that you have to translate, things you have to cross-apply, information you have to draw patterns and insight from immediately as it comes and change and alter and update, information that has to be constantly updated. And an introvert is going to do better in areas where you can retain and manage and center and build up a system of ideas and thoughts. The introvert prefers and works from this lab environment of the world. The introvert works from this reality where you can go into your mind palace, form a worldview inside of you with theories, thoughts, memories, experiences, lessons from life that you can then use to understand new information and new situations. And introverts prefer to look at the world from this scope, where you focus in on things that are relevant to your introverted interests. The extroverted external world is only of interest to an introvert when it matches up with their inner interests, their inner thoughts, their inner values and experiences. An introvert is trying to confirm and prove theories and memories and histories and lessons and to apply and to put in place and to alter and change the world according to these theories and lessons. An extrovert is going to prefer to take new ideas, new patterns, new information, new experiences, to bring it inwards and to align it with and find experiences inside of them that are relevant to the personal situation that they're experiencing right now. So an extrovert who you're talking to is going to give personal experiences and exp examples that fit with the situation. They're going to be able to give you relevant data where an introvert is going to struggle to find data that is relevant to the here and now. The introvert is going to find more data that is more relevant from their own perspective. Their idea of relevancy is completely different from the extrovert. The introvert believes that relevant is something that has to do with what you're currently thinking about. The extrovert believes that relevant is something that fits with what you're currently observing. So, as I study the ENs and the ENPs, and the ENFPs and ENTPs in particular, I realize there's a dumbification going on, constantly a smartering, condescending attitude from introvert intuitive types and people who identify as introvert and intuitive. There are descriptions and stereotypes in place to make it easier to identify as an introvert intuitive at the expense of ENFPs and ENTPs. It's not because people hate or struggle with ENFPs or the ENTPs in any way, but it is because people are more focused on understanding themselves, even if that takes away from other people's understanding of themselves. And uh, we don't realize this. We don't know that we're doing this, but we're doing it. And it's not good. And it needs to stop. We need to stop the dumbification of NAN, of any and of EN types and of ENFPs and ENTPs. And that includes understanding what ENFPs and ENTPs bring to the table. First, ENs, extroverts and intuitives, are amazing at cross-applying information, making and forming algorithms and theories about how the world and information belongs together, forming information and insight about patterns, coming up with ways to cross-apply a situation to another situation. Finding out a way to relate and to use new information and new inf uh, insight and to understand the irrelevance with all patterns. Extroverts are amazing at applying an idea in practice. Taking an idea, taking a code or a thought or a theory and saying, okay, so that's and that and that and that works with that. 
when I talk with ENFPs and ENTPs and I share my theories, they will almost always bring me people to look at in particular. They will give examples, they will give data, they will give things that are relevant to what I'm talking about. And that's why it's so amazing to talk with extroverts. They are able to usually supply me with data where I feel sometimes with introverts that we are both, both talking over each other's heads. I'm talking from my head out and they're talking from their head out. And uh, while of course you can relearn this and you can be aware of this and you can improve and you can master uh, healthy communication with introverts as well, extroverts are amazingly smart and intelligent when it comes to quickly understanding new ideas and insight, even this complex jargon and theory that can come out of my head at times. So often it's when I talk with ENFPs and ENTPs that I feel this big relief and eureka and aha, because they show me immediate repercussions of what I say and what I do. They show me, because I tend to think personally, very intrapersonally, I tend to think why people do things. I don't think about what people do, but I think about why people do things. Extroverts think about what people do. So extroverts share with me and they say, that person did that and that example happened there and look at that and look at that person. Why did that person do this? And I go, that person did that because of that and I see things behind that and that probably was because of that. And we are sharing and we are in this personal flow that is really amazing to be in. And in all of this, I'm realizing the value of extroverts. And I'm realizing how fucking intelligent you are. How, god damn it, uh, I'm jealous sometimes. You are like supercomputers. I have never seen, like, I would never be able to make these connections. I would never be able to spot these patterns. I don't notice these things that I'm doing. Sometimes you notice me doing things. And I had no clue I was doing that. I had no idea that I was actually doing these things. And you think in things that are terms that are so real. Where I see motives and intentions, you see character. You see personality traits. You see character traits that are so important to recognize. You see if a person is evil or if a person is good or nice or kind or rude. I see why a person is nice, kind, rude or evil. <laughs> and that's another level of thinking and I feel like sometimes your level is so much more real while it's intuitive at the same time and I have to say this video and I'm sorry it's not about the extroverted sensing it's primarily about extroverts and intuition not because extroverts and sensors are stupid but because they are often the ones that are the most at victim of like this stupid shallow stereotype any is not shallow, it is diverse, it is quick, it is real, it is practical, and it has immediate repercussions, and it is constantly supplying everyone with amazing information, new insight all the time, new ways to look at the world. Still, I do want to say, for the extroverted sensor, that there is something you bring to the table that nobody else does. And it ties together with all this realness talk. As I said, Ians are like supercomputers that make connections. They think like detectives, they see patterns, they see and cross-apply information between situations. All the while, extroverts and sensors see and bring up the here and now. To an extrovert and sensor, everything is real, everything matters, everything you say has importance. Everything you say has an immediate, tangible, practical value. What you do right now, as it is, is important to think about. Your actions, the consequences your actions had, what you did, is important, not just why you did it, not just other situations where you also did it, but why you, what you're doing right here, right now. And if there's anything an ESFP or an ESTP brings to the table, it is that right here, right now, you are doing this, it's not good, it's not working out, people look at that person who's doing this, look at that person who's about to do that, 
that can be dangerous, that can be terrible, that can be harmful. You are making, you're taking realness to a whole new level. And I don't think there is any greater intelligence than intelligence of survival in the here and now. There is typically probably nothing more important. There is probably nothing more that that requires our immediate attention as much as sensing. A ball flying right towards our head needs to be caught. A fire happening right before our eyes needs to be put out. A person being violent needs to be held back. We need to take immediate action to address problems that are happening right around us so that the extroverts and intuitives can find and cross-apply and see where other fires might emerge in different places, if there's anything synchronized, if there are also other things going on that we need to stop, so that the introverts and intuitives can see why these fires started, who put them together, what the network behind it did, and why they did it, and what we can do to address the long-term problems. And as all of this is happening, the overall message is all types are smart. Extroverts are not dumber. You can only say that if you don't live in the immediate world that requires practical, applicable, and present action. You can only say that if you live in this sheltered lab environment bubble that requires nothing immediate where you have time to think where you have time to sit down where you have time to systemize and write down and start up maps and typically that's not too often 